going on guys? Welcome to the video. Um, so today is actually an off day. Yesterday we had a game, the day before that we had a game, we played the Tulsa Roughnecks. It was a rough game, we lost 3-0. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say about that. Then we tied SIUE, so yeah, the weekend uh, as a whole just wasn't that good. But that was still preseason, so we have one more week to prepare. And this weekend, March 25th, is the very first game of the 2017 USL season. And we play Louisville. So I'm very excited, I'm ready, um, and I'm looking forward to it. In whiskey knee, highest floor, the Bowery, and I was high enough. Somewhere along the lines, we stopped seeing eye to eye. So you were staying out all night, and I had enough. That took a ridiculously long time. And now my bacon is cold. So I've honestly not filmed anything all day. I basically, at like 11.30, Sebastian and Tavo came over and we went over to the gym and I did like a leg session. My whole like philosophy with like leg days is to do them like one or two days after my game if my legs aren't tired or sore from the game. If they're sore from the game, I don't do leg days. But like my legs aren't that sore from the game. So I went in, did some legs because I have a full week of recovery before the next game. So that's just my mentality. A lot of people think like, oh, you need to rest after the game. I think it's kind of just like feel out your body and see how you're feeling. And then after the gym, we went and got some food at Schnucks at just a grocery store. Um, then we went over to Tavo's place, me, Sebastian, and Tavo, and we just sat down and like analyzed the Tulsa game all together. Just us three like analyzing the plays, where they went wrong, where they went well, how we were doing, all that stuff. And I think it's good to analyze the game with another person too, if you can, like with a coach or a parent or somebody just so they can give their opinion on like what you should have done differently maybe as well. Um, but sometimes I do it by myself, it doesn't really matter. Other than that right now, I'm just gonna do some work on my computer and then I'll probably go fly my drone a little bit later today because it's a beautiful day. It's like 80 degrees, look at this day. It's 80 degrees outside. I love it. So I'll probably be doing work for two or three hours, probably just until sunset. It's just honestly just answering tons of emails I've been getting so many lately, just honestly, it's getting so much that I can't answer them all anymore. So I try to answer questions that I haven't talked about in videos. Um, if I have talked about a video, I usually just can't get to it just because just the sheer numbers of it. And then also one of my really like secret projects that I'm working on is coming to completion. I'm, re I'm really excited about it. And then as always, I'm putting in some work for the uh, Elite 90 program and it's coming together. It just takes, these programs take like months for me to all like working two, three hours a day on them. So it's looking good. So this is what I'm talking about with the weather though. Today's 83 and sunny, beautiful day today. Tomorrow is 61 degrees and partly sunny. The next day is 47 degrees and cloudy. Like a 35 degree swing in a matter of 48 hours. But it looks like it's slowly warming up and that's awesome. And I know I'm gonna regret it when it's 100 degrees and 100% humidity, I'm gonna be praying for the cold weather. But anyway, so about like analyzing the games, I think it's crucial. If you guys can film your games, have a parent film, even just like regardless, not even for a highlight video, just to watch it again and to see exactly like from a different perspective about your touches, about your passes, about your decision making, especially with another teammate or coach or parent there to help you analyze it and be like, look, instead of trying this, try this. It just helps a ton. Like me, Tavo and Sebastian are there and like I'd be like asking them a question like, hey, what do you guys think about this play? Do you think I should be more tucked in here or do you think I'm good out wide? And they'd give me their opinions. And the same thing they'd ask like, there, should I play it at one touch? Should I play it at two touches there? And then we have our opinions and we kind of like debate about it, talk about it. It's just a really good learning experience. And it's just really great to build upon your game like that. Actually, now that I think about it, it'd probably be good to show you like exactly what I'm talking about. 
So I'm gonna show you just a, like a minute clip of the game. I'm gonna show you exactly like my thought process about what's going on. I'm gonna show you when I pause it. I'm gonna ask questions so you guys can learn. Okay, so this is literally inside my head as I'm watching this. I'm watching me throw it into my right minute. I'm going, was that a good ball? Good. I'm just looking at my options right now. I think I made a good choice playing that opposite center back. Now we can switch the ball. I didn't think I had tons of options. I'm watching my position right now. Should I be more tucked in? Yes, I should, so I'm tucking in. I'm happy with that. Now the ball's coming in. I'm very happy with my position right now. I'm happy with my body being opened up. I'm looking, I'm checking my shoulder. Good, now I'm running out to the side. Could I be a little bit higher up? Probably. Now I'm looking at this. Did I make a good decision? I think that was a bad pass. I don't think I should have done that. I got a little lucky there. I think I should have swung it back to my center back. Now I'm watching this right now. Can I do an overlap? I think he sh it's good for me to stay back a little bit right now. Um, my positioning's good. I'm just watching. The ball comes out here. I'm, did I tell Jose here to time? Did I say time? I'm checking my shoulder. I'm seeing what's going on. Okay, now I'm just watching the team play right now. Can I be back? I should be far, five yards back so that ball doesn't hurt me. Yeah, so can I be harder in that tackle? I probably should be a little bit harder in that tackle so he doesn't get out of that situation. Okay, now I'm just watching. I can't see myself, so I'm just kind of watching what the team's doing. Good. Am I in a good position there to win the ball? Yes, I am. Good. That I was happy with my tackle and that aggressiveness gets to the ball there. Now I'm watching my team. Can I be up higher the field? Good. Good. Now I'm getting up the field. I'm asking for the ball. I'm checking my shoulder. That ball needs to be better. It needs to be much better. Okay, so now I'm just getting these points. I'm, I'm really just evaluating my game constantly. Okay, so now for this throw-in, do I make a good decision? It's a good ball into my outside back or my outside mid. Can I create a better angle? Maybe drop a couple yards so I get a little bit more space there. Okay, now that's a good run. I'm open. I create some space for him. I should back up. I'm too close to him. I need to back up. So I do that for the entire game. That's what goes through my head. Also, a little update just about my body. Uh, the patellar tendon is feeling amazing. Like I, didn't, I have zero pain when I played 90 minutes against Tulsa. I have zero pain even when I'm like squatted today. Four sets of 10 reps at 135 pounds and no pain. Um, so it's building back up. It's definitely building back up. I'm not out there still squatting 225 pounds. Like I always say, I'm slowly progressively going up and up and up strengthening up the patellar tendon. I'm still doing my exercises. I'm still doing my stretches. And it's been almost, what, let's see, one, two, it's almost been three months now of rehab on the knee. And I'm still not stopping because it's the only way to get it 100%. If I stop now, that injury is gonna start creeping back in again. So I have to be very careful. And that's where a lot of people go wrong is once it starts to not hurt anymore, people usually stop their rehab. And that's when you really have to continue to progressively go heavier and heavier and heavier and build up stronger and stronger so that it doesn't come back. I'm gonna take the DJI Mavic Pro out today, get some shots too for this video. I love, I always love flying that thing. <laughs> so I haven't showed you uh, me writing in my goal journal a, a lot. Actually, I think I'm, since I started this Life of a Pro series. Um, and just because I'm not showing in the video doesn't mean that I'm not doing it. So if you look back in here in my goal journal, and for those like my new subscribers, my goal journal is literally just me writing down um, what's going through my head for practices, how games are going, how I'm feeling mentally, everything about soccer, like my feelings and games and goals, everything I just put in here. It's almost like a, like a diary, except it's just, just about soccer. But in this particular entry, I'm probably gonna talk about the Tulsa game, uh, how I felt. I'm gonna talk about how the training went this last week. And then I'm gonna to try to write some goals for the training this week, the goal for the Louisville game, um, stuff like that. Like obviously a goal for the Louisville game is for me to be a starter. That's one of my goals for sure. I so now we're gonna go see Kong. It's like six o'clock at night, the movie starts at seven. We're gonna go grab dinner at like a sub shop, firehouse subs. Change of plans, so we're actually gonna go to a later showing, so that means we're not gonna go out and eat. So I'm just gonna make some chicken, veggies, and rice. Really simple, um, but yeah, I'm excited for Kong. It'll hopefully, my teammate needs to get back with my car. If it gets back in time, then we can go see the movie. If not, then we can't see the movie. Voila. Can I just get one ticket for um, Kong? I help you out? Yeah. 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 
Are you ready, Brate? Here we go. <laughs> ready for King Kong. Ready for King Kong. It's called Kong Skull Island. No, that's King Kong. <laughs> Where's that Max? King Kong. <laughs> that was the worst movie that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm not exaggerating. It, the, I don't even know where to start. It was like every cliche in the book. It was terrible plot line, terrible subplots, terrible characters. The only thing that was good is I forgot the actor's name, but the guy from Step Brothers, not Will Ferrell, but the other guy, the other the step brother for, of Will Ferrell, he was funny in the movie. But other than that, I was just sitting there just not liking it. Dragon didn't like it. Max didn't like it. Uh, Milan didn't understand enough English of it. <laughs> And, but Dennis liked it, he said. But I don't know, it was like 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. It was like 70% on some other website. And it was like five out of five stars on Fandango. And I don't know what person in their right mind would be like, that's a good movie. You know, let's, that's good. So I'm going to bed and I'm kind of angry right now because of that movie. It put me in a bad mood. If you've seen it, comment what you thought of it. And if you thought it was good, just tell me why you thought it was good. All right, I'm going to bed. Good night.